Hello, my name's Ian McGarrigal. I'm Chairman of the World Retail Congress and I'm delighted to be joined here by Tom Charlick who is partner with OCNC Strategy Consultants. And we collaborated uh, last year for last year's World Retail Congress to produce this uh, uh, major piece of work on the theme uh, for last year's Congress on high velocity retail. And Tom, really starting on that, so here we are um, approaching this year's um, Congress and looking back on uh, the High Velocity Retail Report, which was very well received by delegates and, and since uh, last year's Congress. I wonder what your take on it now is in terms of what uh, it, it taught us or, or sh um, has shown us about uh, what it takes to win in today's retail world. Yeah, well, I think firstly, and it was it was great to be at the Congress last year and have the opportunity to debate the report um, with retailers live, uh, if you like, and, and get their feedback and have discussions around which elements of it really resonated or which had sparked thoughts that maybe they hadn't had before. And, and we actually laid out six themes within the report, but two of them really have or stood out then and I think have continued to be themes in the discussions that we've had with retailers um, uh, retailers post the event and the first of those was really around uh, being choiceful and choosing where to follow uh, being as important as where to lead as a retailer um, and I think particularly as a reaction to some of the omni-channel uh, talk and discussions in the marketplace that have been around for five ten years I think we've seen a shift in retailers' mindsets of being much more selective around the investments that they are going to make, the customers they're going to target, and the propositions they're going to build. And, and a big part of that is around economics and being able to afford to do all of those things and being able to develop a business that can deliver all of those things effectively. So that was one theme that really stood out. They can't do it all on their own. Yeah, they can't do it all on their own. So, yeah, exactly. So looking for partnerships to build capabilities around what you're going to be great at um, and thinking about your organisation slightly differently was a key part of doing that and enabling that. Um, so, so that was one of the, the first themes that really stood out for us in the discussions around the report. And then the second one was around the different business models that we see succeeding in, in the high velocity retail world. And we identified in the report four models. So we talked around the platform model, which I think lots of people are aware of. Um, and we see it expanding particularly digitally um, at the moment. Uh, but we also talked around models of success around customer solutions, which are retailers that have taken a, uh, an approach to supporting uh, the end-to-end -end life of a customer across a different segment or category. And that can involve services, it can involve product, but it can involve support after that as well. And, and that is a, an increasingly interesting angle that we see certain retailers exploring. Um, we also see brands uh, becoming much more focused on getting close to their customer, becoming dynamic and, uh, and actually maybe put it, putting slightly less emphasis on owning the distribution. And then the last category of, of model that we see being uh, a winner, if you like, within the high velocity world is still the value champion. So someone that can leverage and build real scale in particular categories and deliver uh, a price point and a value and quality equation that just can't be competed against. That, that, it might sound a little bit traditional or old school, but there are a number of retailers globally that just continue to win uh, with those fundamentals. Yeah. And so moving forward to this year's Congress, and uh, as you know, our theme is the relevance agenda, building on high velocity retail. Um, and we've chosen it because the word relevancy kept coming up in many conversations and still does with uh, retailers that you would classify as uh, winning or certainly performing strongly. But really interested to get your take on why relevancy is, is imp so important uh, or deemed to be so important uh, in today's retail world. Well, I think at the heart of that is because the risk of becoming irrelevant <laughs> is, is, uh, is life-threatening and, and we continue to see uh, retailers fall into that trap and disappear from, from our lives. And, and I think when we think about relevance, we have to think about it in a couple of different ways and, and this is what we're starting to get into as part of the research. But there is an element of that that is creating close connections with your customers and actually 
understanding how to build those and how to sustain those in today's world is something that we think is really important and something to get under the skin of. But secondly, there is uh, an element of what is the appropriate message to be pushing through those connections at any specific point in time. And we see retailers today struggling or attempting to strike the balance between some more of the softer or emotional factors. We, we've heard a lot about sustainability and how important that is to consumers today, but how do I balance those elements versus the more functional traditional elements of a retail proposition, such as value, such as quality, such as customer service or fulfillment, and ensuring that you are offering the right balance of of messages and, and themes of being appropriate um, is equally as possible as, uh, or equally as important as just having the relationship uh, with customers. Yes. So I guess if you'd asked retailers 10 years ago, 20 years ago, they would of course said, you know, we need to be relevant to our customers or words to that effect. So are we talking about something different today in terms of looking at relevancy and the things you've just touched on? I mean, are we, are we really, this is a much more heightened uh, definition, if you like, of, uh, yeah. of relevancy. Well, I think uh, retail has always been an industry of change and there have been major shifts over time in terms of what are the winning propositions and what's required to win. So part of this is just a continuation of that theme, but I think what we are seeing and we continue to see, and it was a big element of the high velocity retail report, is that the, the, the pace of innovation, because we live in a digital world, is accelerating. And, and therefore, as customers move and the barriers to identifying alternative options uh, are reduced, and just the sheer scale of those alternative options and competitors that an individual retailer is, is up against increases, um, it makes the challenge harder to stay relevant and to make sure that you continue to meet the needs of the customer group, that you continue to to deliver the right message for, for an increasingly um, diverse, diverse and fast moving customer, yeah. customer group. Yeah. So you're taking all of this work and you're right in the middle now of a new report which you'll be presenting at this year's World Retail Congress and it's, it, it's, it's titled Accelerating Relevance based around our theme. So can you tell us a little bit more about the approach and uh, what will be the uh, sort of uh, the end point that you're looking to present to retailers? Yes, so I think where we hope to get to uh, as part of the report at the Congress is both a diagnostic of <clears throat> really what it takes to stay relevant in today's retail from a, from a proposition and from a strategic perspective. So how should I think about the, the channels that I'm participating in, how I build relationships with my customer and how I make the balance of my messages right for individual need states and individual customers. So there's a part of the report that we want to focus on that element and the trade-offs and the decisions that are important there for retailers. But the second part that is equally as important is around how a retailer makes that happen. And, and actually, we, in, in a lot of the research we're doing, we're trying to understand for those retailers that we think do a good job of staying relevant and accelerating their relevance, how internally and organisationally are they approaching this? And how do they make sure they're setting up to be able to continue to evolve with their customers, mm. with the need states, uh, understanding what the competitive threats are and staying relevant? So we, we hope to balance uh, both kind of the strategic diagnostic with um, some real tangible elements around how retailers can actually get yeah. after yeah. the opportunity. Yeah. If I think back, um, it is almost a year ago, we were in the middle of the uh, high velocity retail uh, report research and we were literally um, undertaking qualitative and quantitative research around the world with senior retailers. And we, in the research, asked a question about how relevant they believe their current business model was to deliver uh, to their customers. And I think the finding was pretty stark, saying like 75%, I believe, uh, believe they, their model wasn't yeah. um, doing what it needed to do and therefore almost suggested they weren't starting out yet on that journey to transform it. A year on, what, what's your sense? You're working with retailers all over the world, talking to the industry. What's your sense about, is there an accelerating transformation under, uh, undertaken? Well, I think the short answer is probably yes. I, I think we continue to see uh, really exciting examples of retailers that have either 
taken a bit of medicine and, and come out of the other side and are now really focused on what it takes to win and performing fantastically, or new retailers or new businesses that, that wouldn't traditionally have been defined as retailers, seizing on those opportunities to come into the market and grow and create value and create really exciting propositions. So there is a big element of our work that's really exciting in that manner. It's a great place to be at the moment. Now, that being said, I think there are probably some that are still working through that um, and are, are really deciding how much medicine do I need to take or can I really get that through my ownership structures or, or my, my trading constraints. Um, and then there are some that probably it, it will still prove too difficult to make those changes and, and really do risk um, becoming irrelevant and, and falling by the wayside. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Tom, um, thank you. We very much look forward to uh, hearing the findings of the report because I know it will be uh, incredibly valuable uh, to everyone uh, in the audience at the Congress. And uh, as I say, the report will be delivered and uh, produced for the, this year's World Retail Congress. And we look forward to seeing you all there. Um, and thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you.